All right, let's talk about this terrible nitro. It sucked. All right, we can go home now. Yep, that was it. Nitro number 192, May 24th, 1999. They did have some very nice things for Owen. They opened, yeah. up, the, they opened up the memorial graphic, Owen Hart, the years of his birth and death, and the ringing bell salute. And they didn't do 10, they went three. They went three. Well, uh, WCW did know. that. Yeah. WWE did 10, WCW did three. It came huh. out, it, it, was, it, was, it was classy, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. I think theirs was like one, two, three for the end. WWE was a 10 bell oh, salute. I see. I see. Yeah. That actually makes more sense. Uh, ju- just a blank graphic and 10 bell ringings would have been honestly That's covered. okay. They recapped the Sting Luger Steiner's confrontation from last week, then the Flair Bischoff Piper Nash Savage stuff, and then Luger Sting Steiner's again. I was already bewildered. I was just glad that we actually got a recap because last week we were all confused because we didn't know what was going on. That's true, but they you're did a less recap. confused now. If they did a recap, I was still confused. Now you didn't let me finish. Wait till we get to the Eric recap. <laughs> I so badly need a a big giant chart. It won't help, dude. You see the charts in the movies where they're like, there's things pinned to the wall. And no, no, no. You know what it is going everywhere. You ever seen one of those drawings of like an impossible room? With like this, like a uh, like you see the thing MC- go up right here, but then it merged into something that it actually couldn't do. Or MC Escher, all those something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that that's that's what your that's what your your board would look like. The, trying to explain the Nitro hmm. storyline. The, the the universe WCW existence just constantly folds in on itself yes. and comes back anew. Let's yes. be honest. If it was Vinny's chart, oh no, there'd be a lot of scribbles and crumpled up paper and and a knife in the wall. I have holes and, I have punched in the wall. Yes. So. So on Thunder, apparently, Randy Savage tried to recruit Rey Mysterio Jr. Because why wouldn't he? And Rey said no, so Savage beat him up. Yep. And he beat up Bagwell. Got Rey's a total geek on this show. And a ref, and Lord knows who else. Yeah, they treated the uh, cruiserweights like gold here tonight. Yeah. Bam Bam Bigelow and Dallas Page attacked Raven and Saturn backstage. This was the most nice and easy beating you've ever seen. Like, Bigelow sitting on this big... Great. box yeah. sure and saturn and raven walk in and ddp flies in i think he hit him with a chair it was but a it was like four. the it was a two by four it was the lightest two by four right. shot right, right. we're both right it was then a two they, by four it was light like they all fall down off screen and then bigelow gets a chair and he like hits the ground off screen yes, yes. sounds great that was a whole beating yeah like why did they bother why don't you just have the guys laid out backstage this was so well, they, hokey that would have spoiled the end very hokey Six minutes in, we finally go to the announcers. Mm-hmm. They acknowledge Owen's death. They wish the best to Brett and the rest of the family. And they run down all that's going on in the company on this show. Chavo Guerrero Jr. versus Van Hammer. The new Van Hammer. Van- the new, new Van Hammer. Van Hammer's got a new look, and Bobby actually says, quote, maybe just a change of clothes will do it for him. No. It did not. No, because he, still, he still had to wrestle. Do it for him. So he is no longer a hippie. He came in here in his Adrian Adonis biker gimmick kit. You know, it wasn't all his fault either. What's that? It was him and Chavo, and Chavo also sucked. I thought it was... You're not a fan of Chavo. No, I'm not. Sucks. Neither am I. He had a great dropkick here. Yeah. What's up, Rob? Uh, nothing. I was just going to say, I actually did try and go into this one as well, and I made it as far as this one before I... Still drunk? Oh, compl- oh yeah. No, I, okay. I blacked out after this. Okay. Um, but I, one thing I did want to mention is, am I the only one who thinks that this, with this new look, that Van Hammer looked like a the love child between um, a young Big Show and Diamond Dallas Page? Well, he was tall. He was blonde. Yeah. He was tan. He had, I guess it was Big Show's hairstyle and Page's hair color. I think the problem is we're watching too much of the current Big Show. <laughs> This guy looked nothing like the current Big Show. Both Big Show and Dallas Page are way better than Van Hammer. That's true. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let me write that down. Yeah. So, they had a... a, It was a fine opener. Dude, it sucked. What are you talking about? Van Hammer just goes out there and hits one random move after another. None of them have anything to do with anything else. I'm going to hit you with a move. I'm going to hit you with another move. I'm going to give you a bear hug. I'm going to hit you with another move. Another move. And then he sidewalk slams him and pins him. There was no comeback. It was an Alabama. There was no story. It was a what? It was Whatever. An Alabama it doesn't slam. fucking matter. He slammed him. Hey, consistency. The people need to know. No, someone, they don't. Someone at home is making a, a Van Hammer edit for their video game, <laughs> and he's accuracy on what his finishing move is. All I know is another fucking big lug is getting a push. <laughs> that is a fact. It never works. And it goes. It, it goes back to what, what's your favorite thing about Nitro? I don't know. It's your favorite thing, but 
they're in a wrestling war, and the match they throw out to start is Van Hammer and yeah. Chavo Guerrero Jr. This was a fucking opener. Yeah. Van Hammer with his new change of clothes <laughs> and Chavo. Yeah, it drives me crazy. They are unopposed in the first hour. Craig, what has Chavo ever done of any value? I don't know. He has he he was he has had moments in his career, usually as a tag team partner or a faction with somebody else. Him and Eddie. The, those they were around awesome. for a fun tag team. He was part of Misfits in Action, which was fun. Maybe it won't be in hindsight, but it was fun at the time. You yeah. have much fonder memories of the Misfits in Action than I do. I'll see how it goes. The only, the, Literally, the only thing is Eddie and, and him when they were lying, cheating, and stealing. Dude. Yes. Yeah, because of Eddie. That did help. That's I could have put, I that, put that, Vinny granted. with Eddie. It would have been good. That's true. Wow. That's true. Jeez. Steph. Just telling you. It's true. <laughs> Me and Eddie would have been a great tag team. <laughs> I just stood in the corner. He jumped on my shoulders. That'd be it. Okay. Me and Gene brings Disco Inferno out for a promo. Disco's wearing jeans and a t-shirt. He's not dancing. Killing his gimmick. He's wearing, he got beat up. He's wearing sunglasses. Gene demands he remove them. So Disco's face is all beat up, apparently at the hands of Randy Savage. And Disco talks about all the horrible things Savage had done on Thunder just to get a shot at Nash. If you wanted a shot at Nash, I got his phone number, his email, his pager, his fax. You could have just asked me. If you would have had Paisley draw a black eye on you, she probably did a better job than, than the make Yeah, she'd have jabbed me in the eye. Would have looked like that. Okay. So Disco's wrapping things up when the cat's all-time terrible generic network edit music yeah, plays. Yeah, what the <laughs> fuck was this? It will never not be funny. Cat says... Cat comes out and he says, Disco... You're out here crying just because you got beat up a little bit. And I thought, oh my god, he's talking to Dakota Kai. He actually was. <laughs> Eventually, You're a punk, he says. You make me sick. Yeah. Get the hell out of here. So they start brawling, and Cat beats Disco's ass. Yeah. <sighs> now, I know he came in hurt, and yes, Sonny Ono tripped him at one point, but Disco is the geek to end all geeks here. Mm -hmm. Like, more often than Disco Inferno usually is. So, Cat starts calling out fans, because this segment oh. just won't end. <laughs> They cut to the back. The B team is watching. I cat. swear to God, I was certain I would. I'd been watching the wrong show. <laughs> it felt and, like we got back in time. And all I can think is, have I not seen the B team tell Scott Norton that the Shad is calling him out like four times in the last three <laughs> it's months? A, it's a game to them. And then, as I am saying that, the announcers say. This is like the third or fourth time this has happened yeah. in the last few months. Yes. Is this fucking going anywhere good? I'm guessing no. I don't no. want to hear, yeah, it's going somewhere. He beats him up again. Okay. Is it going anywhere good? So Norton had been shaving in the NWO locker room when he got the news, but he, is, he had shaving cream on his face and he yep. comes out, he toweled off before he came out. He has like two chops and cat bales. And Norton gets huge cheer, like the biggest baby face in the world. And as usual on Nitro, I have no idea who the good and bad guys are and who I'm supposed to cheer for. Would it have been it so a great bad, mystery? It would have been so bad if if there was some continuity in the show and only half of his face was shaved. Right, he, should, he should have had the stuff on his face Just when he came out. Shaving cream on his face. Okay. Fucking stupid. And you know what? The reaction to Norton, all world championship wrestling fans wanted to see was action yes yeah do you understand me yeah <laughs> that's all they wanted to see was two dudes getting it on and they can't even fucking give them that no they just have to keep doing shit wait till we get to bischoff's fucking interview <laughs> mike Tanay walks up to rick flair's office knocks on the door and then walks in even though nobody answers Kevin Nash highlight video. I will say this. This is much better than the last one. The well, last one was like, Kevin Nash fixes his hair for a minute. Here, at least he was slamming dudes and booting them in the face and looking big and scary. Okay. Ric Flair and Arn Anderson met with L. Dandy. This was funny. Said, you are the greatest Mexican warrior of all time. Tonight, though, you'll be wrestling David Flair. Arn will give you the signal. And you'll go down. Well, what's up with Rick? The... <laughs> <laughs> He's being Ric Flair. <laughs> Maybe he got yelled at for saying the office. So okay. Flair, that's probably, probably true. Flair promises if you do me this favor, 
They'll stay on this side of the border forever. No more tacos, he says. And I thought, what? <laughs> yeah. How was that incentive? Just steak. Tacos and, are awesome. Just steak and chicken. So, El Dandy, Vinny, I guess. Vinny, tacos are good. <laughs> if I could have steak, I'll take the steak. How, about, right? how about steak? And I'm a steak Mexican. Tacos. Steak tacos. I'm a Mexican. Chicken tacos. Here. All I know is the reason that Flair went like this was because he wasn't sure this guy spoke English. That's part of it, too. So whistling? Which is, he ends up, he did speak English. So whistling is the the yeah. international yep. symbol? Have you ever never watched Arena Mexico? It's nothing but whistling during the heat. So El Dandy leaves, and Sarge steps up. Dwayne Bruce. Now, last week, he had... Dwayne? He looks like a Dwayne. <laughs> D-Wayne. Are you a good friend named Dwayne? I do. Okay. He looks yeah. like a Dwayne, too. He does. Yeah. How about uh, The Rock? Less he does not look like a Dwayne. He's the biggest damn Dwayne I ever saw. So, Aldandy leaves, Sarge arrives. Sarge is upset because, of course, he did a Flair a favor last week by lying down for David, and now Flair has to live up to all those promises he made. To which Flair replies, and a quote, I got you a Gold's Gym membership. What more do you want? That was funny. So, they suck up to him. They say, it's going to take time. We'll fulfill our word to you. But for tonight, we'll, we'll give you a match against Chris Benoit. And Sarge accepts and says, I'll never take it That was a reward, by the way? I don't know. Yeah, he just wants to work. And Flair noted being president of the world is a tough job. It is. I'm, I'm guessing it would be. So Gene's interviewing Mike Tanay. Yeah, they brought out Tanay to try to explain a storyline. <laughs> so Tanay says, because we have the president, Ric Flair, we have Bischoff, who we'll get to, we have Commissioner Piper, and there's also a board of directors. Because what WCW is, everyone, is this massive bureaucracy. And occasionally there's wrestling matches. Yes, that's exactly what it was. So what I, They went out of business. So nobody wants to fucking watch that. Tanay says Nash went to the board of directors, demanded a match with Savage, and he will get that match at the Green American Bash. So he finishes his sentence. I can take it back. He's about to finish his sentence. Yeah. When Gene says, okay, got it, go. And he pushes Mike Tanay out of the way, and out comes Flair for the real promo. Yeah. So f- I love that Tanay explained it was unprecedented in the history of wrestling for a champion to challenge a challenger for a championship match. Unprecedented. Said. Never happened. Yeah. Skeptical. So Flair comes out. Flair's been doing TV for 20 years at this point. And I don't know if it's his fault or their fault or if they actually did it on purpose that could be part of the story. Flair can't figure out what camera to use and he's talking about it. Yeah. He's telling the director, which camera do you want? This one? Well, I mean, he's, this one. he's partly crazy in storyline. He did tell him not to wrap him up. He, yeah. So he's, he's a gimmick. He storms down and he, he says, sit down, honey. Your mom got to ride Space Mountain 20 years ago. Maybe tonight will be your turn. Yeah. So that I left. So again, so Ric Flair, I think is bad. Randy Savage. He's a heel. Randy Savage, I think is bad. Yes. Kevin Nash, I think is good. But Flair comes out here and says, Savage's elbow is illegal. Nash is going to squish him. What's happening? Well, Somebody he killed, please! He killed Charles Robinson. I, I don't know. I don't understand. He runs down Bischoff. He runs down Piper. I was <laughs> beside myself. Dude, I was bewildered. I had no idea what he's talking about. I had absolutely no idea. And then, and then, Gene says, "Rick, what's going on with this stuff backstage with Dandy and Dwayne Bruce, Sarge?" And Flair starts ranting about this or that. And then Gene's like, "All right, we're out of here." Never even got his answer. That's like an important question. You know what I mean? That's an important question. This is a very bad show. It sucks. Speaking of sucking. No, 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 Vinny. I remember Tori's outfit 19 well, years later. It was the best thing on the show up to this it was point. The, yes. Unforgettable. Unforgettable. You, you, you talk about Tori Wilson, because clearly it's made an impression on you. It sure did. Now, David, I guess we got to talk about him. He is among the worst wrestlers I've ever seen. There was a point here, ever. There was in a my point life. where I had determined David Flair was the worst wrestler I'd ever seen, and then he did manage to pull off a backdrop and nobody died. So I said, "Okay, I guess you're not the best." Let's talk for about twenty minutes on his rope running. We could. His arms are at his side. He's running. He's hitting the ropes. He's not grabbing onto the no. top rope. Or the middle rope with his other hand? No. He has his arms Nothing. down by his sides yes. as he hits the ropes. He's veering this way and that. Rob, have you ever been into a pro wrestling ring? Uh, I have not. You've been in a, a, a boxing ring or a cage or anything like that? Yeah. yeah. No, similar, but... Uh, 
I could make you run the ropes in two minutes better than David Flair could. In oh, yeah, match. easy. easy. And, and he'd been doing this training, theoretically, at power plant for weeks. Wouldn't you think he would be able to do that just on the basis of being Ric Flair's son? That would also no. Help. It wasn't a whole much. No. Anybody who's watched wrestling would do a better job faking running the ropes. This apple fell far this. from the tree. It sure did. Unbelievable. So... This fucking sucked if you haven't gotten the message yet. Okay, so this is a very bad match. Let's jump to the I can't believe here. they put David Flair on TV. So, there's a spot where Dandy punches David. And the horsemen determine, this fucking guy ain't gonna take a dive here. So, Flair takes a ref, Arn gives a spine buster to Dandy, and David puts on a figure four and wins. Okay. If that's all it takes... Why are you paying guys to take a dive? Sure, I don't know. I don't know. Just fucking help him win every time, for fuck's sake! I don't know. This show sucks. It makes a goddamn thing. This show absolutely sucks. Tori was ungodly hot. She was. She was. She's all the announcers could talk about. They go to Gene. It's all he can talk about. She was a vision. On the yes. Evening. A vision in pink. She wasn't pink. So Gene brings up Buff Bagwell, who challenges Savage to fight him face to face. But tonight, he has a match with Vic Steiner. Says, last time we wrestled, I nearly died in Columbia, South Carolina. Tonight I'll show you why I'm buff and I'm the stuff. And your brother will be there. And I'll show him why I'm buff and I'm the stuff. Yeah. He did do his catchphrase twice. Who wants to talk about Bischoff? I will. Good. I will. You know what? This wouldn't have been maybe so bad if they weren't putting these fucking interviews in the middle of these shows. These are the worst wrestling shows of all time. And meanwhile, this fucking guy is on TV telling me that he is turning this company around. Yeah. I'm like, fuck you. Like, you think this shit is good? Seriously? Yeah. They have this video showcasing the last seven years of Eric Bischoff's reign from 1993 to 1999. Or maybe it was, yeah, uh, six years, whatever. But anyway, seven, six? Math. Who cares? Nine minus three? I was the six. Math. Okay, anyway, it's six years. Doesn't make sense. Or doesn't make, it, it, the point of this <laughs> is, everything is going along just fine. They're talking about how Eric got some power. He signed Hulk Hogan. He signed Randy Savage. Then the outsider showed up. They powerbombed him through a stage. Turns out that he was in cahoots with them at that point. He decided if he can't beat him, join him. Roddy Piper outed him. Then he went on a power trip and he was running rough shot. Everything's going along fine. And then they actually show the video where Harvey Schiller allegedly stripped him of power. Do you remember that? Kinda. Yes. They did a storyline where Harvey Schiller stripped him of his power, but he kept running the show anyway. Yeah. They added this to this video package. Is that is that the time where he got drunk no. on the show? No. They no. actually okay. showed the footage of Harvey Schiller stripping him of power, and then the voiceover guy just says, he still wielded great power. Yeah. Then it spirals out of control. Okay, yeah, you had the same reaction as I did. I'm okay. fucking watching them do a video package where, like, it's a fucking video package. You can spin any story that you want. <laughs> Instead, they made it true to what actually happened. <laughs> what happened Which sucks. is just fucking bullshit. <laughs> this was the dumbest fucking stupid bullshit video package I've ever seen. It was completely nonsensical. You came out of it thinking, this is the fucking dumbest company in the world. And then they go back to Eric Bischoff. They try to babyface the guy. And he's talking about how he's going to turn this all around. Ah. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? This is a parody of a wrestling show. Th there was... And I won't even talk about what comes next. The... Following this fucking video at about the... turning everything around. If you wrote down one sentence on paper and said, we will do a video package recapping Eric Bischoff's history, that would have been a great idea. In execution. <laughs> Complete disaster. So they're doing a cruiserweight battle royal. By the way, everybody, just remember, this cruiserweight battle royal 
followed that Eric Bischoff promo where he tried to babyface himself uh-huh. and talked about how he was going to turn this company He's going to present the matches people want to see. Yes. So we got a cruiserweight battle royal. All the geeks come out at once. Can we talk about the highlight of the geeks coming out? Yes. Don't even tell me you didn't see it. You didn't see it? I'm listening. Oh, my God. I, I, maybe amazing. I didn't. So the first three guys come out, and in the lead is Juventud Guerrero. Saw that, yep. He takes his water bottle, he pours it over his head, he does his thing that he does. He takes one step. The water that had fallen on his head has fallen onto the sloped ramp. Excellent. His feet slip out from under him. He falls down and lands right on his coccyx. He grabs his ass. He is selling this, I swear to God, like he broke his ass. I'm sure he did. I, I confess I missed this. He's grabbing his ass. He's he's rolling on the ground. Like, guys are just walking past him and looking I, I, at I know, him. I, know, I didn't notice that part. Yes. Because he because he tried to either no-sell it or pose or something. Oh, he didn't no-sell it, dude. He I, oversold but it. But he's, he's standing in the aisle, and everyone's kind of, like, veering around him. Yeah, like, and the, nobody the bothered. The Red Sea is parting around him. Nobody bothered to pick him up. Well, finally, That's somebody, he, like, picked him up and patted him on the head. <laughs> but, man, it was the funniest fucking thing I ever saw in my life. And then he gets up and he cuts a promo. <laughs> And then he's fine. I think it was uh, mid-promos where I... I, I <laughs> yes. Got a promo on the ramp. I howled. So there's a dozen men out there. Lash the Rue is out there. Johnny Swinger's in this match. Okay, let's forget about the names. Let me tell you what happened in this match. Okay. It's very simple. There's like 20 small men in the ring. Mm-hmm. Luchadors, Lash LaRue, fucking Blitzkrieg. They all get as close to the ropes as possible... So that two guys can just randomly do high spots in the middle of a battle royal. Because that's what cruiserweights do. Nobody's trying to eliminate anybody else. It's just get out of the way so two guys can do a high spot. Okay. Get out of the way so two guys can do a high spot. I One more thing. There is a point in this match where all of the luchadors are making a circle. And I have no idea why. But simultaneously, two guys are doing a high spot out of the corner. And also, randomly in the middle of the ring, Aviano has a man in a chin lock. Yes. <laughs> in a battle royal. See, when you said that they were getting out of the way of each other, <laughs> I must disagree. <laughs> they were in each other's way all the goddamn time. They were trying to get out of each other's kind way, of. but they couldn't. Some guy would said, I'll do a spot now, but unbeknownst to him, a guy on the eastern <laughs> portion of the ring would say, I shall also do a spot, and he went, bonk. This happened over and over again. I literally so, would give five hundred dollars. I swear on a stack of Bibles. I would give five hundred US dollars to sit. In fact, if I could go back in time, I'd give you more to watch it like live. But if I could sit in a room with Tim Flowers and have him watch <laughs> this fucking battle, I would pay five hundred dollars for that experience. No bumps, no bumps in a battle, battle royal. royal. Jesus Christ! Yeah, they, this they, fucking Tim sucked. did not put this battle royal together. So. Lash and Blitzkrieg eliminate each other. I'll head scissors you. We both go over. Or, or Oh, darn, we're out. So, okay, fine. Guys, we're out. Like, two minutes pass, and the camera cuts. Now they're doing spots on the floor. And not just brawling or choking. Yeah. Lash jumps up in the apron, does a big splash. What are you guys doing? You're spots. out. They're doing spots. Leave. So, then Jimmy Hart and Hugh Morris comes out. Hugh Morris looks exactly like Kevin Owens. He hits the ring and just throws everyone out. By the way... Another reason this sucked. We forgot. So there's guys doing chin locks. Chin locks. There are in guys... A, not even in a heavyweight battle royal. <laughs> no. It's a cruiserweight battle royal, and a luchador's got a guy in a fucking chin lock. There was at least one point in this battle royal where somebody tried to make a cover. Now, that's stupid in a battle royal. Making it even stupider, there was a referee in the ring. Why was there a referee in the ring? I, I he did don't. not count this two, this pinfall. He did not check if the man wanted to submit to the chin lock. Why was there a referee in the ring in the Battle Royal? I'm really getting angry. So, Hugh kills everyone, tosses out all the luchadors, plus things Yeah, a oh, excuse me. Who, Hugh? Hugh. Hugh. Oh, you mean Hugh Morris ran in the middle of a Battle Royal and started throwing men out? A large person threw out a small person. Because the Cruiserweight division that. sucks. How you should not care that. about it. So, the last ones are Hoovy and Kidman. Hoovy faces off with Hugh and then thinks better of it and just leaves. Kid- so isn't Kidman the winner? There was no bell. Who knows? Was Hugh Morris an official entrant once he just came into a cruiserweight battle royal? Kidman Ryan, was the last guy in the ring, but there this, was no bell. I believe this battle royal went to a no contest. <laughs> and then Ray runs down. Why wasn't he in it? 
Well, because the, there's a reason. There's a reason. Yeah, yeah. Because the winner of this battle royal was getting a title shot against Ray. That's right. I see. So well, he ran down and he got Morris out of there, so I think Ray won his own battle royal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he gets a shot at his own belt. Sure. I hate this show. I fucking hate Nitro. A recap of Savage and his crew laying out Piper and Bischoff. I can't say this. I can't say this enough times. I was too kind in Death of WCW to this company. Do you understand me? Yes. I was too kind. I've got to write this book a third fucking time to tell the real story. The real Death of WCW. This does... I, I, there are some shows here that are among the worst shows I've ever seen that I didn't even fucking write about in the book. Because yes. there's only so much space. Sure. Fuck. Okay. I okay, must prepare, prepare myself for this next segment. Oh, Roddy Piper interview? I lost my damn mind. Gene interviews Piper. Piper calls out Savage. Savage's women come out instead. We got a rare funny line from Piper when he says, Welcome to Silicon Valley. Yes. and Medusa, That was funny. And Medusa and George also thought it was funny, mm -hmm. and they showed off their big fake boobs. Yep. So, suddenly the tone got darker, and Roddy Piper, who I think is supposed to be a good guy, threatened to hit them. Yeah. Well, they're heel women. It doesn't matter. Then, I know that. I'm just explaining the stupid bullshit psychology. Then Ric Flair, who I think is a bad guy, came out to defend the honor of these women. Not even his women. Just women in general. I don't think he was defending the honor of the women. He just wanted to get his hands on Roddy. So they start brawling, and then Dallas Page and Bam Bam Bigelow attack Roddy Piper. Mm -hmm. What in the fuck is going on? I can't even talk. What's happening? Dallas Page and Roddy and, and Bam Bam Bigelow are attacking Roddy Piper. Why? They're Why are heels. They there? God. So, and by the way, it's explained why. They show up and they save Flair. Okay. So Flair grants them a championship match at the next pay-per-view. Okay. They're getting in his good graces. I can't believe I'm defending this. I can't either. But if there's at least a smidgen of logic, I'll explain it to you. So they leave. They got what they wanted. Flair goes after Piper and then he books a match between the two of them at the Great American Bash as well. Well, Paige says, you owe us. Flair says, whatever your heart desires, they want a tag team championship match. And Flair says, done deal. Which does play into a storyline later as well. In fact, next. Mm -hmm. Allow me, Vinny. It's Arn Malenko and Benoit backstage. Benoit and Malenko are upset that Flair has given DDP and Saturn a championship match. DDP and Bigelow. Bigelow. Yeah. They want it. Yes. And all of a sudden, Malenko... God bless these guys. Malenko launches into a one of these goofy ass work shoot interviews. Dude, this is for two years we've been here working our ass off and we're still in the same spot. We never get any opportunities. It's like you've got to have a driver's license that says you're over forty five to get a push. That's what he says. A push. A fucking push. He says, We thought it would be better under Ric Flair, but it's just as bad as when we were under Bischoff. Dude. I'm like, you know what? If you want to tell the story that you thought as a horseman that when Flair became the president, you would get opportunities and he did not give them to you, fine. Why the fuck do you have to bring up that nobody's happy backstage in this bullshit shitty company and that everybody hates it here? Fucking sucked. I got seven words into a rant. I wrote, if this is a real sport then, and then realized, what, what's my, why are I, you wasting your time? What's the point? They're dead. They deserve to die. It's horrible television. It's horrible. Just awful. Everything about this. But sucks. Bischoff thought it was great. Yeah, Bischoff's going to turn the company around with stories like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good luck there, buddy. Oh, it didn't work. It died. So, Dean tells Benoit to take his time against Starch tonight. Sting Luger highlight video. This I was very upset they spoiled the next few years of our Sunday night NWA show. <laughs> God damn it. Bastards. It was Fuck. a trap set for you in 1999. It was. I tried to turn it off, but I was this, too late. This fucker's going to write a book making fun of how he went out of business. We shall spoil his Sundays for 10 God years after that. damn it. I know this Flair Sting match is coming up in the spring. Mm -hmm. I know that... Oh, you forgot about Clash of oh, Champions. Oh, Sting and Luger win the Crockett Cup together. Damn it. <laughs> this was a really good video. Sting wins the title, and then Luger wins it from Wyndham. Yeah. Well, Fuck. That part's not good. But this is a very good video. By the way, there's another example of Luger getting for fucked. Yes. Well, you're right. This poor guy. So then they got into the NWO and fake Sting and all that stuff, and they went into this. And 
uh, by the end, like everything in this area of, era of WCW, it was convoluted and illogical, but the first part was fun. Highlights of the opening of the Nitro Grill at Excalibur. Oh, yeah. I did, in fact, eat there once. Really? Yes. Wow. I believe I got cheese. What if they lasted longer than the world? That's a good question. I'll have to go back and I check. I don't know. Piper cuts a crazed promo backstage as his ribs are being taped up. He challenges Paige and Bigelow and Flair to a six-man tonight against himself and two partners. You know, God bless Roddy Piper. He's deceased. He was a legend and a Hall of Famer. But this fucking guy thinks he's so clever. Yeah. And his interviews are so shitty sometimes. He tries so hard. He comes across as like your crazy friend that thinks he's funny, but he's not. And he's just like a little wacky. He, he, there's some hits and misses. Don't look at me, buddy. I'm not looking at you. Go ahead, Vinny. How dare you? That's why I'm here. <laughs> Kurt Hennig comes out to join the announcers. Rap is crap is born right here. Yep. <sighs> this was amazing. First, he can't figure out how the headphones work. It's <laughs> felt like a minute trying to get them plugged in or whatever. Then he talks about how great... He, he, Kurt Hennig's sitting backstage at a wrestling show. He says, I hate rap music so badly. I will go down to ringside. I will join the announcers. And we'll talk about how country music is great and rhythm and blues music is great, but rap sucks. Yeah. He's got nothing fucking else to do. That's true. So he talks about a bunch of great guys, great country singers in the 70s and 80s. <laughs> Says he can sing and dance as well as anyone else. I hope we get to see that. I guess we did hear him sing. We, we do get to see that. Yeah. So this is all to set up a video. Oh, my God. WCW did some, I don't know. They did some kind of thing with Tommy Boy Records. Yes, they had, a, they had, a, they had something. They're going to merge wrestling and music for the first time together. For the yeah. first for the time, first ever. time yeah. ever, yeah. It's there was never a rock and wrestling connection back. Well, in the there day. was never a rap and wrestling connection. Yeah. So they they weren't wrong. Yeah. All I wrote is what in the fuck is this fucking show? And why did they send Raven of all people to this party? Because well, he's a music. There's a reason. Ra Raven's the one guy. Okay. He just they were doing like it was like a concert and a, a bunch of interviews and a few wrestling matches. They're like Booker T beating up some local indie geek. Sure. But Raven's on the sitting in the apron. He says, "Well, I'm more of a rap fan, but if you look at the history of Time Boy, go back to like Africa Bombada. That was the bomb. <laughs> that is that is what he said. I laughed. <laughs> so that happened. Sarge versus Chris Benoit. So in the interview earlier with with Malenko, Malenko's all disgruntled. And, he, and he's doing a work shoot deal, so like half of it's real, half of it's fake. And so he goes, Chris, I'll, I'll try to be monodone. Chris, <laughs> Chris, go out there tonight with Sarge. Eight to ten minutes. Brother, take as long as you want. Yeah, that's what happened. Like he's a road agent. Yeah, eight to ten minutes, take but, as long But as he's you a want. road agent who's given him instructions to shoot on the guy and kick his ass. I guess. Well, Benoit took one look at this guy and said, fuck that, two minutes tops. That's what so, we got. Yeah, it was... And it was not a good two minutes, by the way. No. Imagine how bad you have to be to have a boring match with Chris Benoit. Hey, think about this. Chris Benoit had a boring match with the guy who ran their training facility. Yes. I did make note of that. Yeah. That's amazing. So... Well, he did turn out Goldberg, so... We often watch... I mean, all shows we watch in the 90s, they often get morbid and depressing when the body count wraps up racks up here in 19 or 2018 so kurt hangs on commentary he notes benoit is wearing a black armband for owen hart mm. he talks about uh he's talking about owen and benoit then he says quote the rick rude thing going down which yeah. is his reference to his good friend rick rude passing away one month earlier yes and like this benoit owen rude and just this morbid bomb just hit me like i wasn't having a good mood anyway but now i was really really depressed so they had a boring match. Benoit won with the head button crossface. Steiners come out for a promo. Scott says he's there to find a freak. And they are the greatest tag team that ever lived. Fact. That is true. It's a rock and roll express, Vinny. Second best tag team that ever lived. So now he says Rick's with him in the NWO, but they are bad guys. Even though Hogan are Nash in the NWO and they are good guys. I guess. Rick threatens to break Bagwell's neck again. We get Buff Bagwell versus Rick Steiner. They're doing this match. Now, Before I get to that, I just got one other thing I got to say about the interview. This was another one of those interviews where Scott Steiner is like a... he's a, He has great crazy man delivery, but I believe that Rick is the actual crazy one. Yeah, you said this last week. Yeah. Well, that's true. It's more apparent than ever here. I was like, 
Scott's good at what he does, but I don't want to match with Do Rick. Do you remember when uh, the World's Greatest Tag Team, they were out for a long time, and they came back in Ring of Honor, and Shelton Benjamin was always scary. He watched Charlie Haas, and he yes. thinks, that is a maniac. <laughs> yeah. Shelton would pin me. Charlie would tear my arms off. Yes. Yes. That's same what thing, I got out of this Same year. thing with the Steiners. Yeah. I just wanted to add one thing with this, with uh, Scott's promo. He was burying WCW and ended it by saying, WCW sucks. And Heenan says, good point. <laughs> so Rick Bag or uh, Rick Steiner versus Buff Bagwell, a year and a half or whatever after Buff broke his neck against Rick and nearly died. And they're wrestling and wrestling. And with that real and storyline injury playing into this, Rick Steiner gives Buff Bagwell a pile driver on the cement. Mm -hmm. Buff needs to not wrestle for the rest of 1999 selling this. <laughs> It's insane. So they go, they put Buff in the apron and Scott's holding his neck and Rick goes to the top rope when an engine revs and apparently engines revving in WCW are disqualifications. Well, you know, there was a monster truck driving down the fucking aisle. I mean, we got to throw this match out. Didn't Steve Austin, like Austin did this a couple weeks ago, but he got like to the edge of the aisle and stopped. Yeah. This monster truck drives down the wrestling aisle. Right. Yes. Very narrow margins of error. Here. No, Austin did the exact same thing. He went down the fucking aisle. So, in fact, he hit the ring once. The monster truck? Not the monster truck, the but the big, truck. Uh, the big beer truck. That's true. That is true. That's true. So, the monster truck parks. Sting is allegedly driving this. We are told this. We can't see. And then a guy leans his head out the window. He's clearly wearing a Sting mask. And they say, look, there's Sting. And I think, okay, so that is, that's the professional monster truck driver they have hired. No. To sure. safely drive a monster truck down the nope. aisle. And then he takes the mask off. It's Lex Luger. Yes. Now, in storyline, why do they do that? <laughs> well, Lex says. Because they wanted to surprise you. I'm going to disguise myself as Sting. Then hide in Sting's monster truck. And then Sting can sneak in. And sneak will stick. Sure. So Sting is in the ring for at least like two minutes before the cameras pick up on it, which means the announcers don't pick up well, on it. Well, he snuck in from the crowd. Anyway, the signers just leave. This was really, really fucking weird. <laughs> Conan comes out and attacks Hennig. They brawl to the back. Jimmy Hart and Hugh Morris come back out. Mike Tanay is going to interview them, and his question is, and I quote, and I fucking quote, what the heck's going on here? They call out Ray Jr. Ray comes out. They may as well have had a match. They brawled for several minutes. And they put a chair on... They kill Ray. Yeah, uh, Ray comes out to challenge... Okay, so Hugh Morris is sick of the same guys having the same matches for the past four years. That's what he says. Yeah. I want something different. I want Ray. Ray sprints down to the ring like a hero. Gets his ass completely handed to them by this big guy. Yeah. So they put a chair around, chair around his neck. Gonna moonsault him and kill him. Conan runs out to beg for mercy. Is this over yet? How long is this fucking show? A couple so, more matches. Conan's out there to talk. Kidman runs out and attack you. They triple team Hugh Morris. And Kidman hits him with a shooting star press. That was, to be fair, the biggest pop in the entire show. Hogan comes out for a promo. First promo since his knee surgery. He thanks Nash for getting the world title back in the Wolfpack. Says he's been at home watching wrestling. He was watching the Triple X porno wrestling on the other stations, he says. What channel was that on? I think those were his apartment wrestling tapes. But he didn't like what was going on in WCW either, he says. He explains... We're on the same page. <laughs> he explains... Smart man. He is the master behind the curtain, the master of politics, the master of the stroke. Wait a minute, what? Maybe that's what he was doing watching the Triple X porno sure. wrestling. Yeah. So... I thought he was just stealing Jared's gimmick while he was at it. I don't know. But this is... okay. You got, so you've got Benoit Malenko saying we're, we're tired of not getting pushed. you got Hugh Morris talking about how he's tired of the same matches every week. You have Hogan come in here saying, I have, I'm have, i the master behind the curtain. You don't see how Goldberg and Piper, Piper act backstage, he says. Well, no, we don't, because it's not part of the show, so fuck off. <laughs> That's it. I, I got nothing else out of this. Fuck him. He says he's going to come back and turn things around, just like Eric. Yeah. I can't wait. Nash comes out for a promo. He brags about being champion. Savage's music hit. The women come out again. George, Gorgeous George was fine earlier. Now she's on crutches. <laughs> yeah. Still in heels. Nobody notices. So Nash has a line where he says he likes watching Medusa wrestle, but he'd rather see her box. So they attack him. They low blow him. Savage appears, lays out Nash with a belt shot. 
And they put lipstick on Nash's face. The crowd is chanting for Goldberg. And they go to commercial. And I think, man, that's a weird main event. And I saw there's like 15 minutes left to go. Yeah, that's not the main <laughs> event, buddy. We got a real main event here. I don't know about that. Rowdy Roddy Piper has claimed that he will get two men to face Ric Flair, DDP, and Bam Bam Bigelow. Who could the two men possibly be? Well, it turns out it is Chris Benoit and Dean Malenko, who are upset with Ric Flair because he won't give them a push. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? At least that made sense in storyline. What didn't make sense is why was Malenko out here in a dress shirt because he's shooting dude the storyline is <laughs> dean is so disinterested in wcw he won't even dress for work anymore. yes you can only shoot in slacks and, yes and... craig you Wait, know this he, he's, okay. he's not shooting in the in the sense i'm going to take you down and apply a legit submission hold and tap you out Understood. he's shooting in the sense of fuck this place working here sucks i don't care anymore so flair was happy at first then confused they did a I guess you'd call it a stare down. But they did nothing for like two and a half minutes. Everyone just looks at each other. So finally they begin to wrestle. If you took Chris Benoit, Ric Flair, Dallas Page, and Bam Bam Bigelow and had them recreate the first minute of this match one million times, it would be better one million times. They fucked up everything. (laughs) It's kind of funny because I wrote Benoit and Flair were really great together. The spot where all four guys were involved. Well, Well, yeah. I can watch that part. So, eventually there's a heat heat on Benoit. Piper gets a hot tag. Raven and Saturn attack for the DQ. Everyone brawls for a while, and they cut backstage, and Paige, who was in the match, is now backstage, and Hogan's laid him out with a chair. Yeah, they they do the DQ, and Raven and Saturn run in. There's a brawl. They're setting up matches for the pay-per-view. Flair and Piper brawling. Benoit's down there. They double-team Flair. They celebrate together. And then, like, Vinny didn't even do it justice. There's... I swear to God, three seconds left of television. Not five seconds, not 10 seconds, not 30 seconds. And in the final three seconds, all of a sudden you just see Hulk Hogan and he's laid out Page. DDP. Yeah. And he says, you got what you had coming, bro. And they cut away. Yep. That's right. I didn't even hear the brother. That's nope. what happened. I've seen worse main events. I've seen worse nitros. La- this was better than last week's show. Yeah, this was better than last week's show. God, it sucked. It's 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 so horrible. What is it? May, June, July, <laughs> yeah. August, September. Uh, five months till Russo shows up. Oof. Hmm. And then at least it will be entertainingly awful. I think. Right now, it's write just, that down, everyone. It's just awful. <laughs> Brian, awful. Brian is now looking forward to Vince Russo booking Nitro. I, I remember like the first like maybe three months of Russo. Booking was actually somewhat entertaining. You're you're you're, you're, you're misremembering, Craig. Okay, you, you, just trust me. It won't be good. It was like a good it, first week. There's not a chance in hell it lasts three months. I think there was a good first and second week because everything was just changing everything around. He had, the he, show so fucking boring. Yeah. But then November is that fucking World Championship tournament with like 95 guys and Medusa, where Medusa gets eliminated and just randomly put back in, and that's a highlight. At least it's quick moving. They they, they we're, we're less than an hour away from two hours. Woo! Let's look forward Wait, to that. Whoa, 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 say that again. Within one year, year. Okay. Nitro goes back to two hours in an attempt to boost the ratings, which actually failed. <laughs> which is mathematically impossible, but they did it. <laughs> I mean, okay, so so just think about this, everybody, okay? Let's say that you've got a five- a four. Math is fun. And a three. With you so far. Okay, so what does that add up to? Twelve. Okay, you have a five, a four, and a three. Yeah. All right, so what's the average? What's the average? Four. Okay, four. Yeah. All right, so they figured if you got a five and a four and a three, and we get rid of the three, mm-hmm. the five and the four will average to four and a half. Yes. He's right. That didn't happen. No. <laughs> How? Their WCW. Jesus Christ. So, yeah, you can look forward to that, everybody. Brian, give any music. Oh, shit. Oh, I forgot. I closed my God notes and everything. I forgot, too. How about that? Well, to be honest, they're short. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, uh, let's play this one here. How about that? The finishes on this show were clean pin, submission that may or may not have been rigged, 
No finish in a battle royal to determine a top, top contender to the Cruiserweight title. Clean submission. No, champion won number one contenders match for his own title. Or whatever. DQ due to monster truck. DQ due to run it. And that's yeah. it. Those, that's those are all it? the finishes yeah. in three hours. God damn. How many matches? Five? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh. Six matches in three hours. Uh, two clean finishes in three hours of wrestling. That's two matches every hour. I heard that uh, Eric Bischoff did a Reddit Ask Me Anything or whatever recently and regrets nothing. What? What? Clearly he's never watched any of his own shows. Huh. Well, we're out of here, everybody. We'll be back on Thursday. Oh, yes. Oh, that's right. Rob's got something important for us. Our good Fred, Ed, friend Ed in San Antonio would like to remind us all that now all of the information for the Vegas convention can be found in the daily update at oh. f4wonline.com. And also, he's teasing a major, hopes to have a major announcement oh, Ed. about a signing for the uh, Feature Stars Wrestling show that weekend. Oh, man. Stay tuned. Well, he better, he better talk to me. That's all I got to say. Otherwise, I'm not going to okay it. Presuming it's, you know, me. It's not the major announcement. All right. All right, hey, everybody. We're back here on Thursday. All the other shows, as usual, as well. Observer Live tomorrow, Filthy Tom, Observer Radio. But that is it from here. We'll talk to you again after a while. Good night. Adios.